one of the stocks out there that investors have, have very much, you know, gone to amongst all of this global turmoil and so forth. And Michael quite rightly made mention there of the, the dividend yield. But has it run too hard, too fast, or do you continue to see it being an outperformer? James, this stock will continue to outperform as long as there's weakness in the market. If we have a look at the characteristics of, B, uh, of Telstra, not only does it have that high yield, but it's a low beta play. And we know that when investors and traders are battening down the hatches, what they're going for are low beta players like Telstra. Last year when the share market was down by 14.5%, Telstra outperformed. It actually managed to rise and not only managed to rise a, a little bit, but it managed to rise about 18%. That's not that's not actually including that fully frank dividend in there as well. So when stocks are going up, what you want to be is in the high beta areas or the high growth areas, like the materials, like the energy, like the industrial sectors. But when the market's going down, they're the first sectors that really get sold off quite uh, hard. And then it's the defences which are in favour. And we certainly saw that today with the telecom sector, one of the best performing. It wasn't just Telstra which was in favour today, but other high yielding stocks as well. We saw uh, AGO Energy as well as Spark Infrastructure structure so the utility sector also very much in favor so it was all about safety and as long as the market's going down investors traders fund managers are going to be looking for that uh, that safety from the storm and that shelter from the storm mm -hmm. and they're finding it in stocks like Telstra. Some of the, the overarching issues you sort of made mention of the, the global factors at play once again Greece very much at the forefront of, of people's concerns at the moment moving forward I mean what is it that you're going to be watching for some sort of indication of why markets are likely to go in the future Sure. Well, Greece is the main focus of the markets at the moment. The key uh, thing around the Eurozone is Spain and Italy, which are considered too big to fail. So what we're watching very closely is the situation in Greece, but more importantly, how that impacts on uh, countries like Spain and Italy, and indeed, who's going to pay uh, for some of the pain that we're seeing at the moment. So just having a look at Italy and Spain, which is the main game in town, we saw those 10-year yields rising to the highest levels that we've seen in, 20, uh, in 2012 so far. Also, we've seen uh, German bonds uh, falling. And so if we have a look at the spreads, we've actually seen the spreads uh, rising to the highest level that we've seen uh, post the euro, so in that euro era. And then, of course, there's the question of who pays. So we're looking towards Germany. And in terms of German-French relations, today is a very important day because we see the uh, French president, Hollande, being inaugurated. And then a few hours later, we see him uh, meeting with Angela Merkel. So that's going to be watched very closely. And, of course, the Greeks situation being watched closely it does look like there's going to be about 48 hours for our government to be formed and if that's not formed then we will see that election call and we will see the Greek people going to the polls in June so that's being watched very closely of course there's been a lot of developments ratings agency Moody is downgrading 26 Italian banks at the moment so the market really worried about Greece but the bigger question is and the bigger issue is the impact that it has on those too big to fail countries like Spain and Italy and of course who's going to pay uh, for the costs of recapitalizing some of the banks and really securing up that eurozone yeah I mean do you remain bearish as well on the gold price if you have a look at gold and what investors are looking for protection from, it's the Eurozone. And if you have a look at gold traded in Euro, then gold has been going up. But of course, most commodities are mainly traded in US dollar terms, and that's the problem with gold at the moment. It's a currency place that strengthened the US dollar, really hampering uh, its move up. And the technical is not looking good at the moment either. We have strong resistance around that 1600 US a ton level. So the fact that we are continuing to see weakness in the Euro and strength in the US dollar is not just just a gold story. It's an across-the-board commodity story. We have a look at iron ore prices. They're at two and a half a month lows, and we've also seen big falls in copper prices. And all these commodities are traded in U.S. dollars. So a huge amount of uh, U currency play into these commodities as at the moment. And of course, with some of the industrial commodities, you've got that uh, concern about global growth and demand as well. Your thoughts on Fortescue? If we have a look at Fortescue, it's a strong growth story. And if we have a look at, um, I guess, its projected uh, run rate, it's at uh, 55 million tonnes in the current financial year, and that's expected to increase to 155 million tonnes per annum by mid-2013. Now, that's fantastic news for the company, as long as it can deliver this project on time and on budget, with one exception, and that's if iron ore prices fall below 120 US a tonne. We saw Standard & Poor's coming out on the 14th of March to upgrade uh, Fortescue's debt rating, but that 
that was the one uh, caveat in terms of the, the, the project that it's undergoing at the moment, and that is if we do see prices fall below 120 um, a tonne, then what we'll probably see is a need for extra funding for that that increase in the project to 155 million tonnes per annum. So if we have a look at uh, Fortescue, if we have a look at iron ore prices and if we have a look at valuations, most analysts have a valuation of around about 150 a tonne for iron ore pricing uh, in the current financial year. $150 a tonne does did seem okay at the beginning of the year, but if you have a look at prices now, they've fallen down to 136.70 uh, US a tonne. So we are seeing prices under some weakness. Fortescue shares are around a full month low at the moment, but nothing compared to a company like China Steel. If you have a look at its stock price, it's at the lowest price since we've seen in 2009. So certainly some of those steel companies under a fair bit of pressure. So the market signaling that perhaps we could see um, some weakness in demand for those steel mills. And of course, if we have a look at iron ore's main use, it's by China and it's by those steel mills.